Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So already in our previous video, we started discussion on this particular architecture, which is basically used to trigger some cloud pipeline based on some on-premise event, right? So just a quick recap how this architecture generally works. There is an on-premise system. If some event occurs, suppose that event is done by this producer, so based on that event occurrence, the producer can uh, make some request to some API, okay? And that, that API we are creating using Amazon API Gateway. And using that API call, the producer will put that event information like JSON kind of format in event bridge, okay? And as soon as the event comes in event bridge, based on rules, the event bridge will put that event in certain SNS topics, okay? And from that SNS topics, you can broadcast that particular event to multiple consumer. Okay. So here, more or less, the whole architecture I have covered, like if you consider SNS, SQS, and Lambda combination in fan out architecture design, I have covered earlier how to integrate API gateway with the event bridge and how to integrate event bridge with SNS. That is also what I covered. Only thing remaining in this whole architecture is this integration of event bridge with DLQ. Okay, how we can send the failure events to DLQ, that's what we have to learn. Okay, that's what I am going to cover in this particular video. Apart from that, list all the topics related to this particular architecture if you want to explore, then please go through the link given in the description box. Okay, so what we are going to learn today in this particular discussion, that is how to configure DLQ for Amazon event page. Okay, that's what we are going to see with practical implementation. So the problem statement can be like this. You are an engineer, data engineer in a company which is having the name LTDC. Okay, and now what you have to do, you have been asked to improve the overall resiliency of the existing event bridge setup and handle any event processing failure. Okay, that is you have to improve the existing event bridge setup such that it can handle any event processing failure, okay? So, how to do that? The simple solution is we will configure DLQ, okay? And let's just go through some theory little bit before jumping into the lab section. That is, sometimes an event is not successfully delivered to the target specified in the rule, okay? In the event bridge rule, whatever target we mention, sometimes the event is not successfully delivered to that target, okay? And why this might happen? That is, there are several possibilities like this can happen when, for example, the target resource is unavailable, when the event bridge lack permission to the target resource or due to network configuration. Anything can happen, right? And due to all this possible reason, the event bridge might not able to publish the event to the target based on rule. Okay. So, when an event is not successfully delivered to a target, Event bridge retries sending the event. Okay, it is just not like it will try one time and then stop if it not successful. It will try multiple times. Okay, you can set length of the time it tries. That is up to what period of time it will try and the number of retry. Okay, both you can configure. There is number of retry attempts in the retry policy setting for the target. Okay, there is event bridge will keep on retrying to put that event in the target. Okay. And that you can configure with length of time, how much time it is retrying and number of retry attempts. Okay. With this thing, you can configure while creating the rule. Right. And by default, event bridge retry sending an event for 24 hours. Okay. And up to 185 times. Okay. This is what is the retry level. Okay. If an event is not delivered after all retry attempts are exhausted. Okay. After all this retry, also if the event is not able to deliver properly, the event is dropped and the event bridge does not continue to process it. Okay, earlier in the existing system, suppose this kind of setup is there, that is max to max, it will try for 24 hours with 185 times retry attempts or you can configure, these are different methods you can configure. So after this many retry attempts also, if event is not able to put in the target, then event bridge does not continue to process that. Okay, it simply drop that event. Okay, but it is not a good design, right? What we can do, why after this many retry also it is failing, that we need to explore as a developer or as an admin team, right? 
So what we can do to avoid this kind of drop case, we can put that event in DLP. That's what is written here. To avoid losing events after they fail to deliver to the target, you can configure DLQ or dead letter Q and send all the failed events to the DLQ for later processing. Okay. So DLQ concept anyway more or less same like what I covered earlier. You can check the description link where I explain detail about DLQ. It just captured all those failure events. Okay. In case of event page. Now we are going to see how it works. We will try to set up DLQ for event bridge and we will try to artificially create the error. We will try to create the error such that event bridge will not able to deliver the event to the target and we will see how the message is going to DLQ after the retry attempt is exhausted. Okay. So here the implementation. Okay. So let's directly jump into the lab section. So what we are doing? We are first creating a simple lab. I will be going to AWS management console and I will be going to Lambda. Okay. And I will create a simple lambda, okay? Because you can configure as per your wish. Just in this video, my intention to show you how you can configure event bridge and DLQ. That's all, okay? So here I can show event bridge demo DLQ, okay? The language I can choose Python 3.9, and then here I can create the function, okay? So here the function successfully created, and now what I will do? I will go to the code. All I will do, I will just print the event, okay? Okay, right, and I will deploy this one, okay? So, step one is done. What is step two? We will create a DLQ, right? We have to configure that for event bridge rules. So, for that, we will be going to AWS Management Console and we will be going to Simple Queue Service and we will be creating a DLQ, okay? So, I will create the queue standard, it is fine. Event bridge DLQ. Okay. And all this configuration I am keeping as it is as of now. I will create this thing, Right? So that is also done. But step three, we will use a default event bus and we will be creating a rule to run the lambda in every one minute. Okay. So kind of cron job or late expression we will be using to basically schedule the lambda. For running every one minute with DLQ configuration. Okay, we will see how to configure even bridge with DLQ. So here our queue is created. Now we can go back to AWS Management Console and then here I can go to Amazon Event Bridge. And here we are having a default event bus. If I go to event buses, here you will see one default event bus is there. We can use this one to create the scheduling stuff. Okay, so we'll just create the rule demo testing. I will schedule this one, I will go to next and then I want to just make it run in every one minute, okay. I will go to next, which AWS service I want to run, I want to run lambda, what is the function name, I will be taking that from here, okay, right, up to this it is well and good. One more thing I will be doing here, if you go to advanced setting, here you will see retry policy, okay. I have told you, right, it is maximum age of event. How much time, how much hours you can basically keep the unprocessed event, okay. That one you can configure and how many time it will retry, that also you can configure. So, I am keeping retry attempt only one and here you can configure DLQ also, right. So, here I can choose second option because the DLQ is there in my current AWS account only. Facing this one, and I will be choosing the DLQ, whatever we created. Okay, we'll be going to next, we'll be going to next, and then here I will just create the rule. Okay, right? So here our rule is created. I'll be going back to my lambda. And if I refresh this one, here you will see one event bridge trigger is added. Okay, and I can go to monitor section and I can go to view logs in CloudWatch. You will see as of now, beautifully with each one minute interval, the lambda logs are getting printed. That means the lambda will be getting called with each one minute interval. Okay. So we have to wait a little bit. So here if I go to even which figure in the details, you can see with each one minute interval, it will be running. So as of now, log group is not created. Soon within one minute, it will be getting created. Okay. So let's wait for that.
and here our log is getting created i will click on that and see here first time it is running at uh, 8:38 pm okay so next time it will run at 8:39 pm we will see that soon it will be running at 8:39 pm also one more print will be coming as you can see last run was at 8:38 pm so as at each one minute interval it is running so at 8:39 pm also it will be running one more time okay so we have to wait little bit to reflect the logs here okay so let us go to the next step and let us try to understand what is this thing. so the thing is we have configured dlq for failure events capture but in that sqs queue we need to add that permission so that event bridge can publish the events in that queue right so that one we have to do okay and i will be taking this particular one principle i will be showing you how to modify the dlq properties i will explain that just let us wait one second and let's see the logs here. So as you can see here, earlier it was getting called at 8:38 p.m. Now it is at 8:39 p.m. So at each one minute interval, this particular code is getting called. Okay. Now just we need to add the configuration such, such that if any event gets failed, then event bridge can put the event in this DLQ after the retry attempt. Okay. So what we can do, we can just click on Edit in the queue. And then here you can see the JSON properties is there. Currently it is allowing only for root account. I will just delete this particular one and the principal I will set as event bridge. Okay. So event bridge should be able to publish all possible options in SQLS in this particular ERN. Okay. That's what we are considering. Okay. Right. That's all. We will just save this one. Anyway, that is not going to impact our current flow because as you can see here, if I refresh this one, as the last run was at 8.39, now at 8.40 also the code ran successfully. Okay. So because currently the code is not getting filled. Now what we will try to do, we will try to artificially fill this particular stuff and we will see after one retry attempt whether in DLQ, the event is coming or not. Currently message available is also zero and message in flight is also zero, right? So we will see whether it is getting changed or not after intentional failure. Okay. Now the question comes how we will intentionally fail this process? We will just remove the permission from lambda and try it. Okay. So if you see here, if I go to lambda and then here if you go to configuration, here if you go to permission, here you will see in the policies this particular policy is attached for event page, right? So that it can invoke the lambda. So if we delete this particular option, what will happen? That in the event bridge rule, although it will try to put the event in the lambda, but in lambda because we are removing the policy, so it will not able to. And after one retry attempt, it will it has to put that event in that DLQ, right? So if you check here, if I go to the rule for our event bridge, here you can check. The event pattern is one minute and target also you can see this is our lambda function as of now dlq is configured retry attempt is one so if we remove the permission from lambda so that even event bridge will not able to invoke the lambda and after one attempt it has to put that event in the dlq okay so we'll inspect that now what i will do i will select this one and i will just delete this particular stuff okay now we are all set okay so as soon as I remove that, see here trigger is also getting removed. Okay, if I refresh this one, here you will see that in lambda, the event bridge trigger, what was earlier present, now it is not there. But in the rules, if you go and if you refresh this here, it will not change, right? Here, still this event bridge know that I have to publish the event in this lambda. Okay, but actually it will not because we have basically revoked the permission, right? So then after one retry attempt, event bridge will put that event in the DLQ. Okay. So if I go here, if I refresh here, you will see that maybe after 8.42, you will not see any other logs is coming here. Okay. Because the permission itself is gone. Okay. So currently it is 8.43 pm. You will not see any log for 8.43 pm. Okay. See, currently it became 8.44. Already one minute passed. But if I refresh this logs here, you will not able to see any logs for 8.43 pm. Only up to 8.42 is there. Okay. So in the back end, what event bridge will try? It will try for one attempt. One retry it will try to do. Okay. And then also it will fail and the message will be coming in this DLQ. Okay. See how beautifully message one message is available. Okay. 
I will just click on this DLQ and maybe what I will do, I will go to send and retrieve message and I will just do poll for this. Okay, as soon as I do, here see one particular message is coming. I can click on that. Here we can get the complete body. Whatever was getting printed in the Lambda console as event information, same thing we are getting here. In the attribute, if you go here, you will see error code no permission. Okay, event page is not able to publish this message because we don't have any permission. Okay, user event Amazon AWS.com is not authorized to perform lambda invoke function. Right, that's what we did. We intentionally fail the lambda and to understand or getting the feel of the DLQ with event based integration, we intentionally did this mistake, right? So here details also you can get, okay? So here if you go to event bridge again, maybe more number of messages will be coming now because again one more time it will be failing and it will be keep on increasing, okay? Now you can take this DLQ message, you can notify some developer admin team why it got failed, okay? Or you can again send this message back to source queue or source event so that it will again try one more time all these kind of experiments you can do but at the end of this video i hope you are clear how to integrate aws event bridge and dlq which is very important to make your whole system more resilient okay so with this this whole architecture is covered we have understood how to integrate amazon api gateway with event bridge and event bridge to sns how to integrate event bridge and configure it for DLQ, okay? And then how to integrate SNS SQS Lambda combination for fan out architecture, also I covered, right? So this whole architecture is now completed with the prerequisite videos and this video, I hope you will able to regenerate this complete scenario and implement in your project if you are getting such requirement where you have to trigger a cloud pipeline from on-premise events, okay? I hope you understood this and enjoyed this particular session. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.